Hello, and welcome to Food and Dine. This is a Top Chef podcast. My name is Keish. And my name is Nilki. And this week, we are going to be talking about Top Chef Season 21, Episode 3, Take It Cheesy. Because I realized that last week, I didn't tell people what we were talking about. So this week, I'm oh. going to tell people <laughs> what we're talking about. Nice. <laughs> and then just to briefly recap the episode, the top line details of the episode, in the quick fire challenge, they had to cook with cherries and one unusual ingredient. And the top dish in the quick fire was Rasika's tart cherry cipollini onions with charred pepper relish and Burberry spice. And then for the elimination challenge, it was all about the cheese. They had to make a dish featuring cheese for 100 diners for the first ever Top Chef Cheese Festival. The winning elimination dish was Michelle's coconut curry collard green sag with pleasant ridge reserve potato fritter and the chef who got sent to last chance kitchen was kenny and his dish was a crab rangoon salad with gorgonzola creme fresh crema luxardo cherry relish and a rice paper chip Tish, what did you think of this episode i thought i you know what my expectations met oh. i hear wisconsin I think cheese. And that's what we got this episode. It was great. Cherries are another big thing, but cheese primarily mm -hmm. is is what I'm tuning in for, what I want to see. So I was excited that they, they brought that in. And not just one cheese, but a bunch of different types. <laughs> Might have heard some new cheeses that I've never heard of before. It's a cornucopia of cheese. Really? <laughs> I love that when they were all taste testing the cheese. I was mm -hmm. like, that's a room I want to be in. Mm -hmm. That's... Mm -hmm. Lactose intolerance? Who cares? <laughs> I want to be there. Hold your fire for when we get to the elimination challenge. If, if I might, if I may, hold your fire. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I will say I do have a brief top chef baggage check. <laughs> There's going to be a whole lot more potentially heavier baggage for when we get to the elimination <laughs> challenge. So I'm going to keep this baggage check light and breezy. <laughs> Let's mm -hmm. get on to this flight. So, of course... I love to see Carla Hall, and for those of you who are oh, yeah. who are new to Top Chef, Carla Hall was in Top Chef New York, that was season five, and then she was also a Top Chef All Star in New York, and that was season eight. And when she was on the show, she had lovely her her lovely curls, but they were black. And now to see her now, as I reminded you last episode, <laughs> I feel the years. I still <laughs> love her hair, but now it's you know, it's mm -hmm. beautiful salt and pepper. And then the other just very brief Top Chef baggage, Marcel Vigneron was on Dish with Kish, mm -hmm. and he was in Top Chef Los Angeles season two. So what is that, six, 16 years ago? <laughs> and then he was also an all-star in New York season eight. And one final all-star from season eight Top Chef, and she was also on um, season four Chicago, Antonio LaFaso is currently one of the final four chef testants on Food Network's Tournament of Champions. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Food Network's version of March Madness. I know I've mentioned it multiple times, and I, I, I promise I will stop. <laughs> but just to remind people, 18 of the 32 chef testants on Tournament of Champions this year were, or are, I should say, Top Chef alums. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that is my Top Chef baggage check. <laughs> it's a good one. That's that, that's a, a light carry on today. You know, <laughs> that was good. Thank, thank you. <laughs> gotta, gotta make it easier. You know, at the counter, you don't want to, you have a long line of people behind you. You got to keep it moving. So true. So shall we get into the quick fire challenge? Yes. All right. So I really, I enjoyed this one. I was, I was excited to see this. Um, the doors. <laughs> immediate anxiety attack oh my gosh i'm like cherries but what is this decoration here in the middle please tell me it doesn't do anything and there's nothing to do with it but there was <laughs> what did you think when you saw the doors i have to confess it took me multiple viewings to realize what the, the little dollhouse doors what does this have to do with the challenge multiple viewings until i saw i think it was kenny say oh doors door door county cherries <laughs> oh Wait, I didn't even realize that until right now. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> very creative. Very clever. Now I don't feel so bad for not realizing. <laughs> yeah, don't. I'll say that was a reach. That was a reach on their part. Mm. That, that's not us being slow. That was a reach. <laughs> thank, thank you. 
I know I'm not the quickest, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so all the chef testants had to pick out cherries to use. They had a variety of cherries, Bing cherries, Rainier cherries, etc. cetera, mm-hmm. you name it. Um, and then each chef, one by one, was brought up to open a little door of their choosing on this horrifying wall of doors and pick out a mystery ingredient that they would have to incorporate into their dish. Um, and can you remind me, how was it that the first person was chosen? I believe she had won, Rotsika got to go first because she had won the last challenge, the elimination challenge. Mm-hmm. And then they forced them to pick the person to go after them, which if you've ever been in an elementary school PE class and you've been like picked last or like you're waiting and nobody's called your name still, that's hard. And to be the person picking, that's that's worse. That's even worse because then you're like, oh, I feel bad. Like I'm not picking this person, but I need to pick someone else. Like the mind games that they're playing with these chef testants is insane it's despicable (laughs) right because not only are you having to choose in front of other chefs who you will Mm -hmm. likely are becoming friends with and will be friends with in the future but also let's not forget a whole entire nation is watching you do this as well oh i know yeah i mean it does it does give you an insight into a little bit of like who's pairing off with who who's you know Mm -hmm. you know who's who's being buddy buddy Mm -hmm. i believe the episode started out with danny and rasika and their their run club, which is so cute. Oh, yes. I do not, however, relate to Danny saying that when he runs, it clears his mind. When I'm <laughs> running, all I'm thinking about is when is this going to end? And I can't think about anything else. So, Same when I used to run. I would, mm-hmm. I would literally, it's like one of those where you're just watching the clock. Has it been 30 minutes yet? Has it been 30 minutes Oh, yet? I know. Anyway, so <laughs> all of these chef testants got to pick their own little doors. I actually jumped in on this at the start of it for a little what would quiche do. And yeah. I just picked a chef testant that I was said, okay, whatever door they open and whatever ingredient they get, that's the one that I'll get to. Um, so for the chef testant that I picked, I picked Alicia and she opened up the door that had Serrano peppers in it. Ooh. And I immediately regretted my pick. And I was like, oh, why did I pick Alicia to go along with whatever her ingredient was? But I did it. And that meant I, I would figure out nonetheless. But first, I want to discuss a little bit about the dishes that the chef testants made. Mm. I thought it was an interesting choice to have all these different variables mm-hmm. for each of the chef testants. Because to me, when I'm you know judging something and trying to figure out what thing is better between two, three different things, if they have like, you know, I want them to be of the same prompt, right? So like if I'm trying to figure out like, oh, is this horror short story good? But I have to compare it against like a comedy short story and like, Fair. you know, a sci-fi short story. Like how am I going to pick one that's best if they're all completely different genres? And that's what it felt like to me when they introduced these different variables. Like someone's cooking with Serrano peppers. Kenny's cooking with marshmallows. <laughs> how different can you get? Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. But the there was a dish that stood out to me mm-hmm. and this is going to be second week in a row that laura has really pulled my attention here she had cherry condensed milk ice cream Ooh. with tart cherry syrup and pepper that sounds nice that sounds clean it does mm-hmm. yeah i will say she a little bit lucked out with getting condensed milk because that led so much and cherries yes really kind of led to dessert maybe yeah I'm wondering if desserts are, because I know a large focus has been put on Kevin and desserts mm-hmm. because that's that's his background as a pastry chef. Yeah. But I'm wondering how much how much experience Laura has with it because she did rice pudding oh. just the week before, you know? So she's picking these these sweet dishes that she's like familiar with. So I don't know. Is there like a secret pastry chef background, like dessert chef background that we're, <laughs> we're not privy to? Like what's she hiding? <laughs> uh, right. Because I honestly did not in our, in our stalker level research, I don't recall seeing that about her <laughs> in her background. I, right. No, I didn't either. <laughs> At any rate, I thought, I thought her dish sounded really nice. Mm-hmm. I've never had pepper and an ice cream dish mixed together. So that alone was intriguing to me. There was a different dish, though, that I wasn't as much interested in eating myself, but I was like, oh, what would this dish look like as a slightly different iteration? Mm. Rasika, she had her her cherry and onion dish. Uh-huh. What would that look like done in a French onion soup? Whoa. Right? Doesn't that kind of sound good? It does. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> my my brain just kind of melted into that idea and said, yes, that sounds yummy. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I was looking at her dish and like the prepared dish, you know, that they go in for the beauty shots and everything that you explained. Like, and the, the texture of the onions and the way that they're cooked just lends itself to a French onion soup. It looks like perfectly in line with what that dish usually looks like to me. So I was like, man, I'd love to see what that looks like in a different different iteration. Oh, wow. It's too bad you didn't choose her as your what? I know. <laughs> I did it to myself. I should have known. Well, speaking of, are, are, you, are you ready to talk about what would quiche do? Oh, yes, absolutely I am. So <laughs> when I sentenced myself to death by getting Serrano peppers, <laughs> at first I was like, what am I supposed to do with this? My initial thought was like, okay, maybe some sort of like, like a salsa with like cherries and, and Serrano peppers. And then I was like, do better, do something better, do something more interesting. So elevating it, here is the, the title of the dish. And you may ask questions after. It's a long title. <laughs> okay. Cherry braised beef tacos with homemade tortillas and rainier cherries and serrano pepper pico de gallo. That sounds really good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How did you come up with this from cherries and serrano peppers to this? Yeah. So... Initially, when I was thinking about it, I mentioned like the salsa kind of thing. And I was like, all right, what else do we put in salsa? Mm -hmm. Obviously, like there's tomatoes. Usually you do put peppers in there. There's going to be some chopped onions. And then I was like, oh, what was that? What was that thing that I made recently when I had serrano peppers? And I was like, oh, pico de gallo. And I was like, oh, yeah, I could just do that with the cherries in it. And then I was like, but you need to have it on something. And I was like, do I want to do like a homemade chip or something, but then I was like, make it a meal, make it substantial. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna bring in maybe like a, a street taco style thing because you know it's more unique flavors. You got the serrano peppers with the spice, um, the rainier cherries. Mm -hmm. I believe those are those are known for their like sweetness. If you say so, <laughs> they are. All right, I'll claim it then. They are. Yeah, I didn't pick a tart. I did not pick a tart cherry. I wanted a sweet cherry, so it has the sweet and spicy pico de gallo. Mm. And then I just wanted a base a meat that wouldn't draw too much attention away from the flavor of the pico de gallo but could still fit in so if it's beef braised in cherry juice and a mixture of, of that then i'm already building that flavor into the base of the dish mm -hmm. and of course homemade tortillas because i'm not <laughs> i'm not about store-bought tortillas i learned how to make home homemade tortillas and then i will never go back they're so easy and they're so much better i'll give you the recipe later thank you <laughs> i'm impressed I want this taco. I, I'd be down for this dish for sure. Are you your street cart, street food food truck. Oh, thank you. You my first patron. <laughs> Absolutely, and of course. Oh, excellent. The judges right behind me. That's right. That's right. And then and then they're gonna be like, "That was awful. Why did you do that?" <laughs> I'm like, "I'm not. I'm not a professional chef, guys. Okay, I'm trying my best." <laughs> I I do have a question for you, mm -hmm. and this is not a question that you may be able to answer. For this particular, what would quiche do? Okay. My question to you is, if you ever do make one of these recipes, I would like you just for fun mm. to record the start and end time. Oh, gosh. <laughs> just because I think it would be funny. <laughs> they have. I think it would they be. They have to make these things in 30. <laughs> I think usually it's about 30 minutes. So this one was 30 minutes. Right. So I, obviously not saying you need to hit. I was just saying I think it would be funny. It would be. Because I'm pretty sure, pretty sure you won't, you won't be. <laughs> Absolutely not. I can make the shortest task into an hour long endeavor. Like, <laughs> do not doubt my skills at time wasting. I will do it. I'm not built for Top Chef. That was something I actually thought about when I was creating this recipe. I was like, it's a good thing I don't have time constraints because I can do whatever I want now. Because <laughs> there's no way I could do that in that amount of time. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. So obviously there's there's no pressure. Yeah. But if you ever do execute one of these recipes, I just want to know how long it took you. Mm. That's all. I'm going to have to do it, and I'm going to have to own up and tell you how long it took. <laughs> but enough about me. Let's wrap up this quick fire challenge. I have a note of dank for this one. Um, a little bit of a hot take. 
and then we can move on to the elimination challenge. Okay. But first, I know Kenny's been kind of in, you know, the general storyline. He's been in there. He's he's kind of had a rough go at it. Mm. When he said he didn't like marshmallows, <laughs> I was like, don't you dare. Stop it. That's stop it. I copied down a quote from him because I was like, this is mm -hmm. the audacity. He says, who likes marshmallows unless you're four years old and camping? <laughs> Well, Kenny, I like marshmallows <laughs> and I haven't gone camping in years and I'm over 20. So you know what? Maybe you should just learn to like it. That's my note of dank. I'm like, how do you not? How do you not like marshmallows? I, it's sugar. I had an immediate visceral reaction to when he said that. And yeah, and I, too, am <clears throat> years old and I, too, <laughs> love marshmallows. And, yeah. and I'm kidding when I say this. But did they put that in there so it would ease his party later? Oh my gosh. It's the it's the Top Chef Matrix. <laughs> oh, wow, that, that was an excellent note of dank because if I had thought about yeah. it, that would have been same. Who are you? I mean, right. All respect to Kenny. Like he is he is putting in the work and he's trying to create these unique recipes, but I just can't get behind it when you say you don't like marshmallows mm -hmm. and you judge other people. Mm -hmm. for liking marshmallows mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. fair enough fair enough so now that i've gotten that marshmallow <laughs> snafu out of the way i'd like to ask you gnocchi is there any other tidbits that you have for the quick fire challenge just a couple just as i'm sure you noted this as well rasika winning two in a row mm -hmm. and manny being chosen last I thought was super cute because they're all afraid of him. And I wanted to, right. and I wanted to say to the chef testants, my dears, it doesn't matter in this particular instance who goes no. when. But it's cute to note that they're all afraid of him. And those are my last <laughs> my last tidbits for the quick fire. I like those. I'm glad you brought those up. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> all righty. So it is time we get into the elimination challenge. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> this is where someone gets eliminated, so it deserves the dramatic effect. Noki, would you like to start us off in this, this challenge? Certainly. So for the elimination challenge, as we discussed, it was supposed to be the first ever Top Chef Cheese Festival. It instead turned into the Top Chef Croquette Festival for 100 fans or 100 cheesemakers and other individuals who enjoy cheese. I would certainly have loved to have been there. <laughs> Yeah, we should have been invited. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cheese. <laughs> and the top dishes for the Elimination Challenge was Helena's, I'm not going to try to pronounce all of the names, apologies, but her mac and cheese with Merlot, mushrooms, and breadcrumbs. And then Michelle's coconut curry collard green sag, mm. which as we know was the winner. And then the third top dish was Dan's mm -hmm. Sancho Cruz Manchego potato dumplings, cream cheese foam, and olive tapenade. And then as we know, on the bottom, my man Kenny, who we're definitely going to have to talk about. <laughs> mm. My man Kenny was the one who was sent to Last Chance Kitchen with his crab rangoon salad, which was too watery. And then Manny, your man Manny, was also on the bottom with his I know potato croquette <laughs> with oh. gravy and cheese curds that he did not manipulate enough. Mm -mm. And then Kevin, another shocker, Kevin was on the bottom with his brie croquettes with Mornay, ham, and truffle. And it was this truffle that overwhelmed the brie. And I still, we can talk about this later, I still think even if they hadn't melted and he had to double, triple bread them, still don't know that truffles work with brie, but we can get into that later. Mm -hmm. So that's the summary for the elimination challenge. And Maybe I should ask you what you thought of the elimination challenge before I start, because when I start, it's going to be some Top Chef baggage, quiche. <laughs> Ooh, all right, all right. I'll give you my my two cents first. <laughs> um, I said quick fire, anxiety, elimination, stressful. Oh my gosh, a hundred people and the judges stop, and they're like professional cheese makers. It was. It seems like a really stressful thing, mm -hmm. and not even to mention the fact that they're cooking outside in ninety-five degree, probably humid as well weather, because it's the Midwest. So you know it's going to be humid. Like that has to do not only horrible things for the people with curly hair, <laughs> but horrible things for the food too. Yeah. Ew. 
that's my that's my primary thought is ew. <laughs> I love cheese, but this just seemed cruel. Oh, okay, so those are your feelings. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm walking up to the counter now with some a little bit slightly heavier, overweight top chef baggage. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I didn't really have a whole lot of thoughts on the quick fire is probably because the elimination challenge absorbed so much of my brain space. <laughs> Mm, really, mm -hmm. And then when I sat down and I thought about it, it probably all started with, so I love what, what Rosica said when she said, it's Top Chef Croquette Fest, and I'm so glad I'm not. Oh, yeah. That was so sassy of her. I was <laughs> yeah. like, you get it, girl. And then <laughs> Carla said it was Battle of the Croquettes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so on the face of it, I like the challenge. I like when they, they do, they'll do all sorts of different kinds of challenges over the course of a season. You'll have your fine dining. You'll have your other kind of challenges and it tests different kinds of cooking, right? Because not everyone is really familiar with fine dining as we <laughs> clearly saw last week. What's a fine dining right. progressive menu, menu meal? Who, who knows? Not these chefs. I still don't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And, you know, this week, you know, they had some chefs maybe do understand and know how to cater in situations. So, for example, people who cater weddings mm -hmm. and other events might have done. I yeah. actually couldn't recall from most of these chef testants from the research that we did seemed like I didn't see a lot of catering experience in their backgrounds. No, a lot of pop-up shops though. So I think that might have a similar kind of experience to a wedding catering situation. Maybe, maybe. No, no, that makes sense. So you have the same kind of challenges where you may be not in an environment that's ideal and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So mm -hmm. you can see in these kind of challenges when they have the cooking for a lot of people, it really shows you the chefs you have that kind of experience and for yeah. those who don't, who can pivot and really handle the situation, right? Because if everyone's mm -hmm. croquettes had melted, I maybe would have felt a little bit worse for Kevin. However, I'm getting a little bit away from my baggage check. So the baggage, baggage portion yes. of this is... Okay. If I sat down and I thought about it, because they forced the chef testants to cook with weird ingredients in the quick fire, it actually forced them mm -hmm. to be a bit more creative and to mm. do something. And actually mm -hmm. maybe express themselves through the dishes, if you think about it. Because I, I went back and I watched the quick fire a couple times because <laughs> I had so little impact on me initially because yeah. I was so taken with the cheese, right? And I thought about right. the cheese challenge and I thought, okay, I saw 50 croquettes. I saw mac and cheese, which was in the top, even though she used a box mm -hmm. pasta, which we're not going to get into. <laughs> we won't say any. We won't mention it. We won't mention it. We'll overlook it. Not, 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 not throwing any stones here. She was in the top. The judges liked it. Yeah. So I, you didn't really see a lot of expression of personality. You didn't see a lot of creativity. And I, I, I do. I, I, I love typically love these kind of challenges where. You know, the public gets to vote because that really adds a layer to it as well. And I like when the judges pick the bottom. And it adds tension and drama and, and interest in, a, mm -hmm. in, I would say, a valid way. Because if the audience says this, yeah. this was great, then it was probably pretty good <laughs> if mm -hmm. that many people in the audience said so. So I'm having this feeling, and I know it's only three episodes in, but this is also combined with the, 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 the trailer, the sneak peek I keep seeing of Kristen saying to the chefs, you need to cook to win. And the heavy oh. feeling I'm getting is that these chef testants are not cooking to win. And yes, I've been primed mm. by the trailer teaser. Yes, I've been primed by seeing <laughs> Kristen say that 50 times now. In the right, past couple weeks. in every commercial. But also, you know, in the first episode, we didn't get to see a whole lot of anything. That first episode right. should have been a pre-episode in the way that it was in Kristen's season, season 10, where she talked mm. about the challenge she had to do, but those challenges were not part of the regular season. They did air with the regular mm. season. Every judge gave a set, a subset of chef testants a test. And those that passed it got a jacket to be officially part of the season. Mm. So those episodes were part of the season, but they were... A preliminary thing. Exactly, exactly. And you saw chef testants who didn't make it. And Kristen was one of those who made it on the show with her soup. And so if I think about it, that's what that first episode should have been. Should have been a preview episode. Mm -hmm. Yes, it unfortunately would have weeded out Kenny, Amanda, and David. Yes. But we didn't really get to see anything about the chef testants in episode one. We did get to see some creativity in episode two. So that, that was good. Solid. And this one, I maybe wouldn't be feeling this way if not for the cheese challenge, which I was looking forward to. And I know that you were as well. Oh, yeah. And then the outcome of it was 50 croquettes and a mac and cheese. Yeah. So my feeling at this point and I know it's only episode three and we have a lot more to go and it could definitely pull out of this tailspin that I'm a, I'm a bit, 
I'm a bit whelmed by these contestants. And as you know, I went a little bit crazy because I was trying to figure out how am I going to replace Kenny? Because as you may recall, right. I have Kenny and Rossica. Mm -hmm. And I chose Kenny for his creativity, even though I knew that his timing was as, Achille as Achilles heel. Mm. And I chose him because in the past, there have been chef testants who've been able to overcome, overcome that. For example, Top Chef Portland, season 18, Don Burrell, lots of timing issues early on. But she got her footing. She was super creative. And she made it to the finals. Mm -hmm. And there are other chef testants who've had early stumbles who... but. You could see their creativity. And I really thought, I actually really liked the idea that he had to turn the Rangoon on its head. I liked the idea of the pho butter chicken. Unfortunately, his creativity could not carry the day over his timing. And so mm -hmm. who do I replace them with? And then I realized when I was trying to think of the chef testants, I couldn't think of any that were really outstanding other than one, the ones that you and I have already glommed onto, right? Right. Manny and Michelle, Team m and that's you. And then mm -hmm. on my side, I'd... I took Rossica mm -hmm. and I did this ranking thing. And this is something that <laughs> Pack Your Knives does as well. However, 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 I don't remember their actual point system. And I am a numbers person. And I just need to understand how to break down where the chefs were so far. So I did an arbitrary <laughs> numbering system just based on their wins, placements in, in the... So if they're on the bottom, they were zero. And if they, they won a challenge and they were one. So, so that kind of very basic, just, just to figure out where they were. Mm -hmm. And once you know it, the top four has not changed. It's been Manny, Michelle, uh, Rasika, and who is the other one in the top four? I want to say it is, oh, Dan, actually. That surprised me a little bit when I was looking at the rankings. I thought maybe be oh, yeah. Kevin or Danny. But actually the top four has been those four, Rasika and Dan. Mm -hmm. So... But that's just based on their wins and losses and their placement in, in the contests and things. Yeah. What this reminded me of, and I hope this is not what happens this season, it reminds me a little bit of Top Chef Las Vegas. So season six, I want to say, where the final hmm. four in the series, I actually went back and looked, topchefstats.com. I <laughs> love that website. I went back and looked, and the chefs that dominated in the first four episodes ended up being the chefs in the final four. So as... You know, so the fourth to last episode, that fourth chef went, third to last episode, that third chef went, second to last episode, and then the last one, the winner was. It's, I will say the thing about the Las Vegas season is that in hindsight, maybe it was lopsided, but I will say like during the course of the season, based on the challenges, none of the other, there were maybe one or two chef testants who were maybe not going to go the distance, but most of them put mm -hmm. up really good, interesting, creative food. Or maybe I have, yeah. maybe I have, what do they call those, sunglasses or... um Rose, rose, color, rose colored glasses. Rose colored yeah. Glasses. <laughs> <laughs> but I am not really feeling that so far. And it's, of course, exacerbated mm. by episode one, right? And mm -hmm. exacerbated by episode three, where I got 50 croquettes. <laughs> so this right. is my, yeah. <laughs> this is my top chef heavy baggage check. These are my thoughts. <laughs> it needs to be said. It needs to be said, you know, mm -hmm. as, as someone, a veteran of top chef, hearing that and knowing that this season is somehow just like not quite hitting that mark of I, creativity, I guess, would you say that other seasons have? Maybe that's something that the chefs will, I mean, maybe that's, maybe that is what Kristen's really leaning into with them when she tells them you need to cook to win <laughs> guys, because I'm not seeing anything here that I want. <laughs> so hopefully her words, her words, uh, light a fire for them. And, and it turns into a, a really big race to the finish. Maybe that's what we'll get to see. Who knows? I want to ask you, are you still mm -hmm. Team Manny after his performance with the cheese curds? Your beloved cheese oh curds. Oh my gosh. I know. It's such a it's so difficult. <laughs> so I know he said he 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 made poutine or poutine, wherever however you want to say it. Um Canadian dish of fries, gravy, and cheese curds. It didn't exactly read as that to me. Mm. Um, and I know he was having some issues with the potato and it kind of melting. So he wasn't able to fry it properly. It was getting soggy. All that being said, <laughs> my heart was still breaking when he was on the bottom three, when he was standing in front of them. And you know what? Okay, I'm going to say it. My respect for him grew in that moment oh. because... Because he just straight up owned up to it. He's like, yeah, I know. It was bad. And I, I can blame no one but myself. I know what I did. I know the mistakes that I made. And if I get eliminated, that's just what needs to happen because 
I failed to meet expectations. And I feel like just maybe having gone from earning immunity in the very first episode to almost experiencing elimination in the third might just click for him into something that's like, I do need to go into that creative mindset. I do need to kind of cook to win. Mm. So I'm still team Manny. Okay. I think he's great. All right. All right. Still love him. All right. Still rooting for him. All right. Well, I, I'm a little bit, I, I was debating between, so I, I did my breakdown of <laughs> the point standing and I realized that it's Dan, a very thorough breakdown. I know, it's ridiculous. And I know that Dan, <laughs> no, it's great. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> for, for validating my OCD. Thank you very much. Thank oh, you. I got you. <laughs> Dan is in the top four, right? Along with Rossica, mm -hmm. Michelle, and Manny. But I cannot take Dan because Dan is high speed dinings. That's Joel's pick. So <laughs> I, I am. Yeah, we're just taking everyone from you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he was smart enough to take him last week. What are you talking about? <laughs> so I, right now, I'm debating between do I want to take Laura or Danny? Oh. Mm. Can you help me with this? Between Laura or Danny? Because they're pretty much relatively even. And if you're asking, they're kind of hovering in the middle in terms of standings. Yeah. Yeah. Which is not a bad place to be early on, but that's where they are. No. Hmm. Well, with Laura, she's had a standout moment um, with her rice pudding in the second episode. Danny's coming into his own a little bit more in this episode. So... I don't know. Danny, Danny seems like he's kind of been a sleeper agent a little bit so that he might be the way to go. Yeah. Are you feeling that? I am feeling that. I'm feeling that because. Yeah. And I have a little bit of a bias here because I know based on our stalker level research, we, we need to find a better word than stalker level <laughs> research. We're going to get banned. <laughs> Those hours when we were stalking these chefs online. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That he has a fine dining background, and that's not necessarily yes. what's going to get you the win in the end. But he, that what that means is he's got the toolkit, and it seems like mm -hmm. he, you know, he might have been able to pull it out if not for what was it the too much pepper in the hops challenge. Like he, like he might have been able to pull that one out, and uh, and yeah, he did really well in the first elimination mm -hmm. with the with his chicken. But then Laura, even though she didn't win, she was on the red team, but she made those eggplant. What was it? Uh, yeah, the eggplant rolls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. which, the Georgian eggplant rolls. Which you and I had legitimately discussed could have been a winner if the red team had been the winning team. Yeah. So I'm torn. And then do I give into my bias for fine dining with Danny? Or do I? Ooh, I mean, you might have to... Wait until next Wednesday to see. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Okay, so you know what? I'm gonna take Danny. Okay, if, okay. If I'm the one, if I'm the co-host who just keeps losing Chef Justin's every episode, it is. Yeah. What it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think, I think Danny's a strong bet. I think he's, I think he's gonna stay in the competition for a while. I think he's a good one. And then I do have a note of Dank, but before I get to it, I wanted to ask you: mm. Did you have any other than the fact that you love cheese? Any other thoughts on the elimination challenge? I do have a couple. Before I, before I bring the room down even more. <laughs> oh, no worries. Bring it down. Um, so for Manny, I am curious. I was thinking if I was given cheese curds, how do you how do you incorporate cheese curds while still retaining cheese curd energy? You know what I mean? <laughs> May I interrupt you? Yes. I would like you to write down cheese curd energy and then please, that needs to be a t-shirt. Cheese curd energy. Big cheese curd energy. <laughs> <laughs> but I did have a standout dish as well, something that made my mouth water when I heard about it. I was like, oh, this sounds good. My outstanding dish was Savannah's dish. So she made an Oaxacan cheese quesadilla with whipped avocado, hatch chili, and roasted corn salsa. And that slaps. I don't need to try it to know it's good. Mm -hmm. And and what did she not do? She didn't make a croquette. She didn't make a croquette. <laughs> you know, she didn't make a croquette. So let's give her that. <laughs> No, I agree. Give her that that notch as well. Yeah. Quesadilla did sound good. Yeah. I mean, it's it's one of the like building blocks of things that you can do with cheese, I feel like. It's like quesadilla. Yeah. You know? And it's it's one of those comfort food things. And those those just get in there. You know what I mean? Yep. That's right. So it was good. That's right. It was good she didn't do a it was good she didn't do a croquette. I feel like that set her 
apart maybe if we're looking at the standings Mm -hmm. she's floating in the middle but maybe a little bit higher because there were so many croquettes and a number of them had issues with them so yeah i think it's putting her just a little bit higher up there which is it's good for her and and if i may say Mm -hmm. okay again disclaimer i cannot do any of this can't chop an onion i can boil water i can poach an egg maybe okay look (laughs) that being said if you know and they this is the thing. When I watched the episode, more than one chef testant said, it's going to be hot tomorrow. Mm. So they knew this. Yeah. They knew this. It wasn't like they just airdropped them into the Sahara and said, right. feed 100 people melting cheese. Yeah, no, they, <laughs> they, they, they were walking into it knowing. Yeah, that's a good point. Just putting that out there. That's, I, I, just now. I want to hear your notes of dank right now. <laughs> Dan, my man. Who I'm borrowing Ugh. from High Speed Dining for this segment, Dan, my man. Mm-hmm. I felt, oh man, because, and I also felt a little bit bad for Laura too, right? Because she got the heat for yeah. it, but it was really Charlie, Charlie, yeah. and then Rosica rushing in to help clean up, even though she had nothing to do with any of it. I know, so kind of her. So that's that's in the food world good sportsmanship mm-hmm, right there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so that's that's my unfortunate note of dank because yeah. um, I, it just made me feel all kinds of things like it took charlie down just a little bit like maybe a, a mm-hmm. little bit more than a bit because come on man come on yeah and then it raised everyone else because i actually poor laura i, know. I mean ugh. and then dan's yeah. reaction i thought was i would have <laughs> i well, maybe I would remember I was on TV. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so yeah, that's my that's my unfortunate note of dank. Yeah. I didn't yeah, that was that was a hard moment. And like just seeing that like pressure and like stress spike in all of them and just immediately get turned up to a 10 made for a rough day in the Top Chef kitchen for sure. Yeah. No, and I just like I was when I saw the preview because they played that in the previews like fifty times. They did. I was so mm-hmm. worried that it was going to be much worse. Like he wouldn't be able to finish. Or I'm not gonna lie. When I saw it in the preview, I thought that this was something associated with yeah his condition with Kennedy's disease. That like he might be like had a wobble in his ankle and he fell. But knowing that it's like it was it was a mistake in the kitchen where something was spilled and then not just one person but two people were affected by that afterward. It's hard. And like he said, you know, he's already, he already takes spills sometimes. He doesn't need to have any extra things causing him to, to fall or trip or all this stuff in the kitchen. And that's so fair. Like, that's such a good point. So yes, once again, I've brought the mood way down. (laughs) Oh, no, you're good. You're good. The top, Top Chef is about highs and lows. It is a journey. It cannot only be marked by just the the magnificent things. There must also be trials and tribulations. Well, thank you. On that uplifting note, I believe it's time for the immunity check. <laughs> it is time for the immunity check. So let's check these chef testants' immunity. <laughs> Get out your vaccination card. Who has immunity for the next challenge? Right now. <laughs> um, it appears that. Mm-hmm. Rosica did have immunity coming into this episode. Yeah. I don't did she need it? I don't think so. Nope. No. I think she was good. I think she was she was coasting. She was cruising. She was doing her Rosica thing. She won the quick fire. Yeah. Yeah. She was she was doing it this episode. It was good. Yeah. And the winner of immunity for this next upcoming episode is drum roll please. <laughs> I don't can't even speak. <laughs> drum roll, please. <laughs> Brr- Michelle. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And I, based on the previews, I bet she's glad to have it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Double elimination. Bet we can get into that later. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's going to be scary. If I'm, I'm already seeing Manny on the stand on the, the cutting block, I already got my heart rate spiking to new levels. Like, I'm, if the two people are going next episode, I don't know what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I have the feeling next week's immunity check is going to be a bit more significant. <laughs> It's going to, it, as you say, it's going to carry some baggage with it, I think. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, those are my thoughts on the elimination challenge. Do you have any last tidbits regarding the elimination? I mean, if you want a food crime, I have one that I'm very hesitant to share. Oh, then please. <laughs> okay. So um, this is this is certifiably awful. 
And it's something that I still do. I frequently. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'll take to the stand. Okay. All right. <laughs> Hold on. Food court is in session. It's in session now. Quiet in the courtroom. <laughs> Hi, my name is Keish. Um, I'm on the stand today because there is a snack that I like to have. Um, one of those things where it's just kind of like a quick and easy thing. I don't remember when I started doing this. I imagine it was probably when I was a preteen or something because it's kind of heinous. Um, and it's something that has stuck with me. So are you familiar with the cereal checks? Yes. Okay. So checks. And now this is where you can, you can choose if you want rice checks or corn checks. Either is fine. You take a bowl and you put half checks of your choosing and half shredded cheese. What? <laughs> and you just eat it with your hands. <laughs> I did have that this past week. <laughs> um, what kind of cheese? So you can do you can do like shredded Mexican for cheese. You can like any like we get a lot of like Lucerne Valley shredded cheese bags and stuff like that. Cheese bag sounds very unappealing, but it's already out there in the world now. Um, so shredded cheese. I've done shredded pepper jack cheese, um, but usually it's like shredded cheddar cheese or like not cheddar. What's the, you know, it's the white and orange cheese. Oh. Colby Jack. Colby yes. Jack. Yeah. Shredded Colby Jack, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so that's, oh, that's something I like. I have owned up to like other food crimes in like my personal life and been judged for them, but I have never revealed this one to anyone else because I just... Even my family, they see me eating that and they're like, why are you the way that you are? So this is out in the world now. <laughs> Gnocchi, please be kind to me in my sentencing. Um, <laughs> I do understand that I probably do need jail time or at the very least probation for 10 years. So let me know. You said you could do rice or corn and mm -hmm. checks and then any yes. kind of cheese. Shredded. shredded cheese it has to be not block cheese. not block cheese not slices okay. cheese i like to think it's like okay because you see grilled cheese right that's cheese in a grain you have cheese and crackers that's cheese in a grain you have shredded cheese and checks that's cheese in a grain okay so it's not that crazy <laughs> oh so you're claiming this is a deconstructed oh oh my god grilled cheese sandwich deconstructed grilled cheese sandwich you know what if you're gonna send me that lifeline i will grab hold of it yes <laughs> yes it is <laughs> Um, and you just did this recently, you said? Yeah, just this past week. And this is a frequent occurrence, is my understanding? Yeah, probably once or twice a month. <laughs> You're like, I don't think I can do this podcast with you anymore. You're insane. <laughs> <laughs> Have I stunned you into silence? <laughs> I mean, I'll do it. I'll do it like every once in a while. It's like if it's one of those things where it's like, oh, I'm like, I want a quick snack, but I don't want to like put a lot of effort into throwing something together. And, you know, cheese has calcium. It's dairy. You know, fortified cereal has protein, potassium, all this stuff. So I'm, you know, I just do what I just do what I need to do. <laughs> I'm going to say you get a week of solitary per offense okay per offense oh per offense oh dang it that's a lot <laughs> <Aww. laughs> i didn't hear that part <laughs> i'm gonna be in there for like a couple months of solitary <laughs> <laughs> well no but i'm a lenient judge it's just when you do it you go into solitary and once you've paid you come out because i need you for the podcast obviously okay and then i do it again instantly and i go back into solitary yeah okay i'll make sure i schedule it so that i like you know i'm eating my snack and then i'm in solitary but then i'm out in time through the podcast and then i'll go back in <laughs> exactly you understand perfectly the sentence yeah exactly it's I it's all about time management really <laughs> banging the gavel judgment has yep. been declared the what? accused may now go to solitary thank you okay <laughs> <laughs> well thank you for being generous to me in that that food sentencing you were kinder than some have been <laughs> You're welcome, because you've been lenient in, when I have stu stood in food court as well, and, I, and there's going to be more food crimes. From the both of us. I'm going to need that leniency to come back to me. Yeah, you know. <laughs> All right. So shall we invite in our podcast guest, High Speed Dining? Yes. 
All right, it is now time for snack time. We have high speed dining here with us. Woohoo! Welcome back. Great to be back. I am so excited. You know, Top Chef is growing on me. I took notes this week. I'm really getting used to the format and uh, it's been fun. But the highlight of Top Chef is now talking to you guys. So, oh, uh, thank you. It's a good time, this whole thing we're, we're working on here. So, glad to be back. How are you guys doing? Excellent. Good. Pretty cheesy, generally. I don't know. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> that, that was a very cheesy episode last night, and uh, that was a very enjoyable. Cheese festival and cherries. Oh, two great things, man. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. it, it was fun. I enjoyed last night. What, what was your, what's been your most recent best bite? What's Joel's best bite? Ooh. You know, I had a really good takeout meal from uh, an Italian-American restaurant this week, The Red Hen. Uh, it's here in D.C. And um, I did some really tasty stuff, a burrata. So there was my cheese for the week. Uh, <laughs> you know, my cheese festival. Woo uh, I did a grilled Spanish octopus and two pastas, garganelli with a lamb sausage and a mezzi rigatoni with fennel sausage. That fennel sausage, uh, the rigatoni, is amazing. I, I call it the presidential pasta because mm. I don't get political with my food. But about a year ago, President Biden and the First Lady went there and ate dinner. And not only did they order the mezzo rigatoni, but they ordered two portions of it, <laughs> two bowls. Wow. It's that good. So I really enjoyed, it, uh, enjoyed that and just had a... It was a great meal at home. And the pastas were so big, I literally had six meals with pasta. Oh, my so gosh. days worth of pasta. Well the, well, the reason it's called presidential pasta, it went a little bit viral, right? Because people were full of that they chose to get their own portions rather than sharing. <laughs> oh, I've got a question for you. I've got a question. Sure. Okay. Now, if you were the president, which restaurant would you pick? to go out to and which meal would become your presidential pasta meal? It doesn't have to be a pasta meal, but which is the dish that you are choosing to put the spotlight on in America? You know, if I, I as the president have to pick a restaurant, mm -hmm. I definitely would not do a restaurant that's a chef's counter or a tasting menu mm. because as a president, A, I want my own space and my own big table. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be elbow to elbow against people. Uh, they'd have to make it sort of a private meal for me if I were okay. to show up. Uh, so I want probably an Italian restaurant too. I I'll say it. Michelin starred Fiola Ooh. in downtown DC. It's one of my favorites. It's a place I always go to uh, on my birthday. Now for birthdays mm -hmm. for me, I spend a month celebrating going to a lot of different places. <laughs> but on the actual birthday, I usually go to Fiola because it's just... They roll out the red carpet. It's your mm. very high end, white tablecloth, fine dining kind of a place. I've had meals go over five hours there, wow. just chilling, taking my time. A lot of great food. Chefs will do some custom things for me. And it is really relaxing. And uh, I think all my Secret Service would have a fine time sitting there uh, <laughs> enjoying. I, I, I've seen it before. I've seen the Secret Service with you know, you get a lot of politicians and people mm. of the uh, high end and, you know, protected area, uh, the protected kind of people going out in these places. And yeah, uh, it's just the perfect place, I think, for for a president. And quite frankly, I feel like I'm special and a president every time I'm there. Hey, that's a that's a good advertisement for the uh, for the restaurant itself right there. Was a kind words. Yeah. I think they may be nominated for James Beard for um, oh. outstanding service or something to that oh. effect, hospitality or something. Oh. So, yeah, that's that's where I would go on a regular basis, and it is pretty close to uh, the White House. It's it's very much near the the federal courthouse building downtown. So there you go. That's that's where I would go. Woohoo! Yes, <laughs> we're eating Italian food. I'm hungry again. <laughs> this actually leads into. So for the cheese challenge, Kalina made a macaroni and cheese. She made it with boxed pasta. My question to you is, let's say you're going to a restaurant and they serve you a, 
an, it's an Italian pasta and you thoroughly enjoy it, but then you later find out it was box pasta. How do you feel about this? Well, I don't think a restaurant of a high caliber would do that, but look, you got to understand what was going down for the challenge with <laughs> serving a hundred different people. It had the festival atmosphere. You know, I've been to several of these types of food festivals here in DC where they do uh, 30, 40, sometimes 60 or 70 different restaurants and you pay a big price, a few hundred bucks, but you get three or four hours of eating at these festivals. And it's just about being able to pump them out, serve people as many as possible, and get the job done uh, without sacrificing too much quality. You know, I'm sure I've been served some great box pasta at some restaurants and not known it. Uh, sometimes you can certainly tell, but I, you know, for the environment, for the the way they were doing it, I can't complain at all. You, you gotta. You got to figure out a way to make it work for you with these festivals. You saw some people, you know, there was the brie cheese uh, being triple. Kevin's brie breaded cheese. Breaded. Yeah. Because th the heat, you, you're, mm -hmm. you ran into 95 degree weather and, uh, you know, I don't think he prepared for that. So sometimes you just got to do what you got to do to make it work for you. And, you know, that, I thought it was a great festival environment. Like that, that was a great challenge. Oh. And a, a great way to bring people in to, to get rated by the general public. I, you know, you have to do a box pasta for that kind of a thing. So would I appreciate eating it? Eh, it is what it is. It, you know, it's survival <laughs> of the fittest in this thing. You don't necessarily have to be the best and win the challenge, but you definitely don't want to be in the bottom three. She was in the that top three. She was. She was. And also, okay, so you're being sent to Antarctica for the winter. Only six months. Only six months. All these trips. You've got a theme with me, don't you? <laughs> We're, you keep wanting to send me places. We're sending you to Mars. We're putting you on a deserted island. <laughs> now we're getting, you're going to Antarctica. World traveling. Bring extra socks. <laughs> oh, and also, you can take a chicken with you because I know you need your chicken. So you will have us. There's going to be a, an Antarctic chicken farm down there. Because I don't know if you can mm. eat penguin. Can you eat penguin? I don't think you'd want to. I'm sure everything is, penguin's been eaten before. You, <laughs> if if it's native to the area, it's been eaten. That's I think that's just facts over but the course of it, life. But is it good <laughs> is the thing. Like, do you want to be? This is off topic. Please, Gnocchi, go on with your question. <laughs> I think it's about the chef, not necessarily the ingredients. <laughs> Okay. All, all, right, right, all right. All right. All right. All right. Are you going to take Kay Kaylina? She made the mac and cheese. Michelle, who made the coconut curry collard green sag with the potato fritter that was not a croquette. <laughs> <laughs> or Dan, who made the potato dumplings with cheese foam and olive top and I. Okay. Are we limiting into the chef or the dish? Chef, dish, both? Ooh. Dish. Is, Let's this, go with the dish. Okay. Remember, you have penguin. <laughs> so of the three dishes for the six months, which is the, which which of these dishes? As you know, with my decision making, uh, I'm stuck in a deserted area for a long period of time. We we can eliminate the male chefs right up uh, off the bat. <laughs> You're talking about the dishes, high speed dining. We're talking about the dishes themselves, not the chefs. Oh my gosh. I would rather have like date like dinner environment rather than. We're talking than... about mac and cheese, potato fritters, or potato dumplings. This is what we're, what is going on. Well, it's really cold down there. You may want to snuggle with somebody. No, snuggle I, with I don't the mac and cheese. Dude. We're talking about the dishes, not the people who made them. Romantic penguin dinners. Sure, sure. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I want, exactly. I want a romantic dinner. You know, another guy goes, here's your penguin. How does this taste? It's, it's, that doesn't do it for me. Um, I, I'm fine with any chef. I have a hard time picking because as we've seen, one of these chefs is used to doing barbecue and things and she came through and won the whole event last night. You know, this this most recent episode. So she's pulling tricks out of her hat that she didn't necessarily know she had before. So, you know, I don't think anyone's cooked with penguin before. Um, <laughs> oh my <gosh. laughs> so you never know who's going to figure out how to make it work. So you're saying Michelle's going to Michelle's going to be able to cook penguin pretty well. <laughs> Well, she's used to she's used to barbecuing. So that's true. I think she's we'd a, end up roasting a, a penguin, whole oh, no. penguin. 
It oh. just I can just see it on a rotisserie spinning oh, around no. and around. I don't want to see it on a rotisserie spinning around. <laughs> that sounds really good to me. Hmm. No, no. Yeah, I'm making myself hungry today. Oh my gosh. Rotisserie penguin. Oh. Bring it, boys. Bring it. I can only think of the penguins of Madagascar. I will not skewer one of the penguins from that oh, children's okay. animated movie. I will not. I refuse. <laughs> but all that being said, and maybe animals that are illegal to consume excluded <laughs> what is the most exotic type of animal meat that you've had Ooh, very interesting i've had shark fin before oh i've had the sperm sack of codfish oh oh um, that's what the that heck? was actually really good it was barbecued oh. at a <laughs> bennu in san francisco a three michelin oh. star restaurant i didn't when they described it to me, they dropped it off. They had an accent, so I didn't hear really what they said. I didn't oh, understand it. So gosh. I ate it, and it was delicious. It's barbecue. And afterwards, I'm like, what was that? Like a sperm sack of a codfish. And I'm just like, ooh, okay. Uh, <laughs> it, it was really good. Uh, I had a rabbit skull before, actually, at Bennu as well. They deep fried a rabbit skull. It looked like, uh, it's not exotic, but it's an exotic thing to eat. And uh, it crunched a lot. I was eating a lot of bones. Oh, one of your most viral videos is bones. You eating bones. Oh, yeah. Fish skeletons. The Fancy. butterfish oh, gosh. skeleton, uh, deep fried. Uh, and they seasoned it up kind of uh, using like Old Bay type of a thing. It was just, they eat like potato chips, these fried bones. It, in the U.S., it's frowned upon. It's not a regular thing. It seems really weird. But in reality, uh, it's really big in foreign countries overseas and, uh, you know, the Southeast Asia and places like that. Uh, they, they, you know, it's just you eat the, eat the meat and then deep fry those bones. Really delicious. I've had alligator. That's a regular thing, though, and down in the south. You know, different. I had turtle soup this past trip to New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd never eaten turtle soup. I, I'm up in the north. I'll eat anything, though, if it's cooked by a good chef. You ask a question, Keish, you get an answer. I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of other regions and willing to eat anything by another chef, my question to you, High Speed Dining, would you eat at a buffet? I read an article in The New Yorker that was absolutely insane. Uh, the headline was, the hottest restaurant in France is an all-you-can-eat buffet. <laughs> this was fine dining at a crazy buffet. It was, it was the most crazy, th you know, first off, I have to say the New Yorker, very funny duddy. There was so much, so many words I did not understand in this article uh, because it was French and because the New Yorker is such high class, uh, <laughs> but they described the most incredible buffet in France that's booked up a year, ra a year out. It's just massive with the amount of food, the high end quality, the crazy a seven tier lobster tower it was just the most insane thing and uh, it's their cheese their cheese tray is in the guinness book of world records they offer 101 or 111 varieties of cheese it's guinness rule it's in the guinness book of world records as the largest cheese platter cheese platter in the world there you go it is france's most profitable restaurant it was wild yeah that that was that was, it's like a dream come true type of a thing. And it's not your standard buffet where you walk up with a plate and just throw a dozen things on it. I, I think they try and keep you to one food at a time on a plate, certainly when they're custom making things because they want you to eat it hot. Also just not overdo it. Really, you get to enjoy it that way. It really, really was a, an insanely crazy article. You, you keep reading it and you go, oh my God, that's so smart. I read this article and I sent it to you both so quickly. <laughs> I, I, I sent it while I was still reading it. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. They have a scale, a golden scale by the door where you can actually weigh yourself when you're going in and when you go out, if you want, just for kicks. I don't think I need that from a restaurant. I'm going to be so honest. <laughs> <laughs> and a buffet at that. <laughs> no, this is white tablecloth. They have a dress code. They're bu it's buffet, but it's strictly mm -hmm. classic French foods. I can't even imagine. That's got to be a wild experience. Unlimited caviar. Whoa. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> for, 
57 pounds, I believe, is the, is, the, is the rate for dinner there. So it was, it was really unique, but the owner of this place, mm. and he won't open other locations because he wants to keep it special. It, it's not about making money for him. It's about doing it right and being exclusive and, and offering something really special. So that, that's a buffet I dream of. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, since you didn't answer the question, did you actually have a favorite dish? <laughs> from this episode. <laughs> so I did, you know, during the cherry, the, the quick fire challenge with cherries, I love that. First off, anything that has a fruit in it or a fruit sauce, just magical. There's, it's nature's fruit, nature's, it's nature's candy, you know, uh, it's such a gift. And I really enjoyed seeing the proteins with cherries and sauces on it. So there were several things that were pork, that had a nice amount of cherry toppings. I think there was a steak in there as well that had some cherry stuff. So any of those really turned me on. Also some of the desserts as well. I mean, there was a, a cherry condensed milk ice cream and yeah, stuff like that just really did it for me for the cherry stuff. What one dish was your favorite though? If you had to choose one, which is why I keep putting you on a desert island. If you have to choose one. Which dish is it? Well, I'm going to take it to the cheese festival then. <laughs> Only one dish had a cheese pull. One dish. Do you, do you know which one that was? Was it the quesadilla? Yes. Savannah with her quesadilla. And Kristen even called it too much cheese, which obviously they said, you're not from Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> but that to me was the most appetizing cheese bite of the bunch. Fair enough. I mean, a quesadilla, you can really cram so much cheese in it and... To me, that was the perfect use of cheese in a cheese dish. So I love seeing that. I mean, I made notes on that one. I'm like, cheese pole, <laughs> finally, at a cheese festival. And and it would... So many croquettes. And it would pair well with penguin. Yes, too many croquettes. But yes, quesadilla and penguin works every time. Thank you for joining us, High Speed Dining. We look forward to hearing about your fine dining expertise next time. Thank you. Well... Episode three of season 21 of Top Chef had its highs and lows, but in the end, to me, it did not disappoint. It's something I will cherish, even though it might have been a little cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh my goodness. You're just like, did you borrow that from Manny? That was so cute. I borrowed it from two to, because I, they, they made, there were two jokes. There was like a, it's like, oh, this is a little cheesy. And he's like, I hope you cherish it. And I was like, I'm going to use both of those. <laughs> Love it. Love it. And also, I, I'm glad that my heavy baggage, my Top Chef ch baggage check, did not weigh you down too much. Not at all. Not <laughs> at all. <laughs> because overall, whatever I say about it, obviously, I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. No notes on Kristen. No notes on anything. Oh, Just right, talking yeah. about the chef tests and themselves. Cook to win. Yeah. Cook to <laughs> win. <laughs> and... Next week, I'm looking forward to next week. As we mentioned previously, it's going to be a double elimination. And mm -hmm. they they have to do dishes inspired by the architect, Frank Lloyd Wright, which yeah. should be very interesting. We'll get into that next week. He's so famous. Even I've heard of him. <laughs> I know. Fun fact. He's my favorite architect. If you could have one as like an average person who has nothing to do with architecture, he's my favorite. So <laughs> That is so cool. Well, mine is Faye Jones, but he's my second. That's really cool. We'll have to talk about architecture off podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and cannibalism. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't forgotten. <laughs> All right. I, I did have a tasty morsel for today, if I may. Ooh, share. Tell us, tell us. Thank you. So every so often, I will read the air quotes news. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I actually use an app. It's called Pocket. I love it. So instead of having a million bookmarks in my browser, I just save these articles to this app. And then what happens there is I only read like maybe one out of every 100 articles I say. Nice. <laughs> this is one of the articles I managed to actually save and read. Mm. <laughs> and it's called We Need to Talk About Trader Joe's. Ooh, okay. And I will put a link to the article in the show notes. So do you have any experience with Tater Trader Joe's, Quiche? Well, um, when I was in college, sometimes I would go there to shop because they had cheap bananas. <laughs> but apart from that, not much, not much else. Okay, yeah. Same. I've only shopped there a few times because I find it to be what the lines just out of control. Oh, they're insane. And I, I'm not here to stand in line. <laughs> no. 
No, I'm not either. But I have friends who are fans, and I get why they're fans. I will say anytime I've had mm-hmm. something from there, I've enjoyed it. This article managed to ruin that for me, and now I'm so oh. glad I'm not ruining it for you. <laughs> 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 no, so what it is, is Trader Joe's, as you know, and as probably most people know, is it's the whole conceit is this, air quotes, fictional character has gone around the world and brought back these amazing treats and foods for us mm. to eat here. And... Mm-hmm. Some people might call it colonial, perhaps, perhaps, Mm. which nowadays maybe is not the most, mm, shall we say, socially conscious. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe not. Yeah. But even that aside, this article, because most people can brush that aside and go, okay, that was, that's how it started. But, you know, okay, let's, you know, but this article, Mm -hmm. and it is a well-researched and written article, and they interviewed people who had this happen to them. What Trader Joe's does is... They'll work with independent read ethnic food creators and purveyors, and they'll work with them to develop recipes and things with a promise that they'll carry their product in the store. And then what happens is after negotiations get to a certain point, Trader Joe's will just, in the words of modern dating, just ghost them. I hate that. They interviewed multiple people. They'll ghost them. And then their recipes that they worked with Trader Joe's to develop will appear in Trader Joe's under oh. a not even slightly different name. For example, one person who to be most requested to be anonymous because they're afraid of, you know, blowback. Yeah. And this one who was willing to go on the record, she had given them the recipe for a certain sauce. And I'm going to pronounce it probably incorrectly, HR. Mm-hmm. A-C-H-A-R. And she intentionally misspelled it A-A-R so that people would understand better how to pronounce it. Mm-hmm. So A-C-H-A-A-R. And when Trader Joe stole her recipe because they had been negotiating with her and then they ghosted her and then shortly after they ghosted her, she started, con- cut her her customers started congratulating her on social media saying congrats for making it into Trader Joe's because Trader Joe's was selling a sauce called HR, also intentionally misspelled, intentionally misspelled, oh. A-C-H-A-A-R, and the label looked just like her label. It was misspelled just like hers. The recipe was exactly the same. They maybe changed the spelling and name of one thing just to, you know, so it's not exactly, exactly. And yes, and this is not apparently a one-off thing because they interviewed many people. And it's apparently a known fact in the food industry that Trader Joe's will just steal your recipe with the promise that they won't, with the promise that they'll they'll sell your actual product. And so that is my maybe not so tasty morsel for today's episode. Yeah, that's that's dirty. Oh my gosh. That's a real life note of dank. That's an active <laughs> mm-hmm. that's that's awful. That's I mean, I get I get that like, you know, recipes are a dime a dozen. Like you're gonna see so many different recipes for the same thing. But deliberately leading a chef or like a food creator into a position where they think that they are going to be respected. Yeah. And then just getting dumped like that and then ripped off, that's that's disgusting. Yep. So. Disgusting big corporate conglomerate. I hate that. <laughs> that's awful. Trader Joe's don't sponsor us unless you want to. <laughs> <laughs> we will pretend this article never happened. <laughs> yeah. We'll go back and edit this out. <laughs> And that brings us to the end of the episode. Thank you for coming along with us on this journey through season 21 of Top Chef. If you'd like to find us on social media, you can look up Food and Dine or Food and Dine Podcast, and you can listen to us wherever you listen to your podcasts. Our episodes drop every Sunday after Top Chef airs. Welcome to the table. Let's eat.